My name is Chris. I'm an HCI instructor. Uh, I've been a firefighter for approximately five years now. I've been teaching for approximately two. Um, I'm here today to review the AED function with you in your BLS class. So if you guys bear with me, I will talk about it in theory, and this we will get hands-on and we'll start doing the practice. Okay. So first things first about the AED, you need to know what AED stands for. All right. AED, AED stands for Automated External Defibrillator. All right. So for the lay person or for the person that doesn't do anything with EMS, um, they can go ahead and they can use this device and it'll be all automatic for them. That being said, we'll go into the use of it and the parts of it. So you have adult pads in every AED. This is my AED trainer. All AEDs are different, but they all function the same. It's gonna be an on button and it's going to be a shock button. You're gonna have pads on them. You will have adult pads and you should have pediatric pads. If you don't have pediatric pads, you can also use the adult pads on a pediatric, okay? But you cannot use a pediatric pad on an adult. Now, placement. The placement of these pads go as the picture shows here. All right, I'll pass this around. You guys can look at it. All right, we call, like to call this firefighter proof. So if you forget exactly where it goes, because the last time you took this class was who knows how long ago, well, you open these pads up and you go ahead and you look at the picture. All right, so I'll pass this around. You guys can take a look at it. So the first thing you do when you get an AED is turn it on, okay? Turn it on. That's gonna be on the BLS test question, all right? Just turn it on. Once you turn it on, the second thing you do is follow the prompts. Just listen to the directions. A lot of people, when they get into an emergency situation, they forget everything that they know, all right? So when you turn this on and you listen to it, it'll tell you exactly what you need to do, okay? exactly what you need to do. So I'll go ahead and I'll turn it on for you so you can just listen. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connector next to flashing light. So at this point, what was my next step after I turned it on? Apply the pads. Apply the pads, plug in the pads. Apply the pads and plug it in, right? The way the pads work, they only work on skin to skin contact. We'll go over some precautions. All right, so once I connect my pad connectors. Analyzing heart rhythm. While it's analyzing, you are not going to touch this patient. You don't want to touch this patient because you, it'll then analyze your good heart instead of the patient's bad heart, okay? And then it'll get a wrong at, uh, analysis. Do not touch the patient. If you forget, it'll tell you, it'll remind you. Shock advised. At this point, you will begin compressions again. Charging. While it's charging. To limit Stay that, clear of patient. To limit the compression interruptions, all right? You're gonna do compressions while it's charging. Deliver shock now. The person, operating, the person operating the AED at this point moment is going to say, hey, clear, we're all clear. And once we're all clear, you're gonna go ahead and press the flashing Deliver shock now. Press the orange so clear, button. we're all clear. Shock delivered. Boom. Begin CPR. Go back into compressions. If you forget the rate, you're gonna go ahead and you're just gonna follow the metronome. You're gonna do a compression rate of 100 to 120 a minute. This will continue every two minutes. Okay. Every two minutes. So again, First thing you're gonna do is turn, on. Turn, it on. turn it on. Next thing you're gonna do is listen to the instructions. Follow the prompts, listen to the instructions. Okay? That is it. Simple as that. It'll recycle every two minutes. That's when you're gonna reassess your patient. And this thing will go ahead and reanalyze. Okay? It'll reanalyze, and if it's a shockable rhythm, it'll say shock advised. If it's not, it will say no shock advice. Now to go over some precautions, I said that the pads only work with skin to skin contact. Okay, so you can't put it on top of their clothes. And if somebody has a very hairy chest, 
you go ahead and you put it on their chest. You're gonna go ahead and have hopefully a razor or if you have a second set of pads, you'll rip it off. Then you put the fresh set on where it needs to go, okay? At that point, you'll go ahead and follow the steps as appropriate. If you don't have a second set of pads and you do have a razor, you go ahead and you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna just shave off the excess hair. And you're not there to do a little tape line. You're there to go ahead and <laughs> it's an emergency situation. So get it done, okay? When it comes to pediatric, if you're gonna use the adult pads on a pediatric, but they're too big, so the pads are overlapping, that's a no-no. You cannot do that, all right? They cannot be touching. So you'll put one pad in the front where the heart is and one, one pad in the back where the heart would be, okay? Anterior and posterior. That'll be the placement, creating a, like a baby or a pediatric sandwich, all right? And you go ahead and deliver the shot. So besides a hairy chest, if they have medication patches, you need to take off the medication patch, you need to wipe it dry, then continue to put on the patch as you normally would. If they're in a body of water or a big puddle, you need to make sure they're out of the water and that their chest is dry, okay? And you wipe their chest dry and then you put on the pads. For females, if they have a bra on that has underwire, you have to remove that. Or jewelry that hangs low to their chest, you have to, you have to move that out the way. The reason for that is because you have electricity. Electricity and metal, they like each other. It's like electricity and water. We don't want the electricity to travel through the metal or water. We want the electricity to travel through the heart, okay? So that's why you have to remove that, all right? And lastly, if you have a patient with a pacemaker, they have a scar on their chest or they have a big lump, you're not gonna put that pad on top of that lump or scar. You just go ahead and you modify it. You move it down just a little bit, okay? And you continue to use the AED as appropriate. All right. Other than that, that's just a quick overview of the AED and its use for adult and pediatrics. Um, again, you cannot use a pediatric pad on an adult. If you can, worst case scenario, use an adult pad on a pediatric. Something is always better than nothing. All right. Thank you for your time.